I wanted to take a bit of a closer look at battery voltage and efficiency. We all know that as you throttle back that you gain back efficiency so you, your efficiency drops when you go to full throttle and you get higher efficiency when you're at mid throttle and, and hover and so forth. So it seems pretty intuitive that if you have say a particularly fast motor and you have a high voltage battery that just limit your throttle and you know everything will be fine and that's what I always recommended for people as well but does that hold up under scrutiny now to be very clear what we're looking at here is not the same thing as picking your powertrain choosing a motor kv and a battery voltage uh, together to match the load that you're putting on it I'm looking at a fixed motor kv and just adjusting the battery voltage the results we're looking at are based on a Rotorx 3040 tri-blade on a Tornado T1 3600 kV motor. And I ran tests on 2S, 3S, and 4S. This motor's got tons of power. The loading under 4S even at this kV is something like 26% of its unloaded RPM. So it's got plenty of power to give and we're not loading the motor down to the point where we're falling like way out of its power band. On this first chart where we're looking at it, this is just the, the thrust that you get for the throttle position. Just so that we can confirm that, you see the 4S, we're getting up near 500 grams of thrust. And if you compare that to the 3S thrust and the throttle position that matches. So if you have a 4S battery in, what throttle position gives you the same thrust as if you were running 3S and it's just slightly above 75% throttle and then on 2S compared to 4S it's slightly below half throttle and uh, comparing 2 to 3 it's about the same where we're um, uh, two-thirds around 66% throttle is close to your uh, 2s power so basically the the math the number wise the number of cell count versus power and fairly straightforward for all of these results looking at the efficiency numbers what i had assumed we would see is similar to what we've seen in uh, older prop tests where we have multiple props that have the same efficiency where in uh basically everywhere here where we're making you know where we're making 300 grams of thrust out of the 4s pack we'd have a similar efficiency um, that we'd have on the 3S and so that we're just getting extra power. But when I actually measured the efficiency, there was actually a significant difference and the higher the voltage got, the lower the efficiency dropped and not by an insignificant amount. Now obviously we do lose a bunch of thrust going from 4S down to 3S, but you can see here at 300 grams of thrust, we're putting in 135 watts of power to get the same 300 grams of thrust out of the 4S battery, we're putting in 148, nearly 150 watts. Exact same thrust, but we're requiring more power to get it. And the 2S, although we lose so much effective thrust, you wouldn't reasonably switch from a 4S to a 2S set setup in, in this case to gain efficiency, but you get an even more significant boost in efficiency at the exact same thrust level. So at 150 grams, right where the 2S results kind of peak out for thrust, that's only 47 watts. The same thrust level out of the 4S requires 65 watts. It's a huge increase in power for the same amount of thrust. And interesting, you can also see that the 3S results and the 2S results are a lot closer together. There's a bigger gap between 3 and 4 and 2 and 3. Although the, the gap in the ultimate thrust performance is much closer the other way, where there's a bigger gap between the thrust you get out of the 2S and the 3S than there is going from the 4S to the 3S. So, you know, we saw that if we have our throttle at 25, it does. Uh, 25% down at only 75% throttle on 4S, this is only 25% of your throttle range here, but it's a very large portion of the total power. So here what we're looking at is the efficiency of each of these battery voltages at a fixed RPM. So the amount of thrust that you get out of the prop is fixed. You go one RPM, you get one amount of thrust. So here at 2000 RPM, this is equivalent to a single thrust level. And you can see 
that the 4S is giving us the lowest efficiency at 2000 RPM, only 2.2 grams per watt, where the 3S is giving us 2.86 grams a watt at the same RPM, same thrust, and down on the 2S, we're all the way up to 3.6 grams a watt for the same amount of thrust, which is well and good if all you want to do is hover. But let's look at the high end between the 4S and the 3S. So we saw from the ultimate thrust results, if you're not going over 75% throttle on your 4S setup, you are using 3S power. But efficiency wise, our peak thrust output out of the 3S setup, we're seeing a efficiency of about 2.2, 2.26 grams per watt. On 4S, that's down to 2.06 grams a watt. So basically, if you're using less than 75% throttle on your 4S setup, if you switch to an equivalently sized 3S battery, you could gain 10% efficiency for no loss in performance. It's a much bigger gain than it kind of feels, but just looking at these uh, at this chart, at these numbers, that means if you were burning through your entire pack in two minutes and you just switched to a 3S pack, you would gain an additional 12 seconds of flight time. Now this is really interesting because something that came out of uh, the recent International Open races is people were struggling to finish um, to finish their races without running out of battery and so people were overcharging their packs to get a little more capacity into them um, and also uh, restricting their throttle. Uh, I think 10-15% is kind of what I heard that people were using for that. So that 15% throttle is about halfway the difference between a 3S setup and a 4S setup. So there's still a lot of power in the table. You can't just switch to a, a 3S and, and have an equivalent thing. But if you find yourself in a situation where you can get close to that, you're not only like, here is our, our peak efficiency on, on 4S at full throttle. And as you restrict your, your throttle limit, you're going up in efficiency because we're lower down in the throttle range. So we're going from like uh, 1.7 to 1.9 grams per watt here at about halfway, halfway down. If you can eke out that additional 10% restriction, we go from 1.9 grams per watt to 2 grams per watt. And if you then switch to a 3S pack and get rid of your throttle limit and so run 3s with no throttle restriction you would essentially double again the efficiency gains that you just got from the the highly restricted throttle so just looking at these numbers if again we make the assumption we're getting two minutes of life out of a full throttle run and we're restricting our throttle by about 15 percent and that's giving us about a 10 percent increase in efficiency from not using the top of the throttle range. So that's about a 12 second gain on a two minute run. If we can get that extra 10% limit, then we can drop to 75% of our effective thrust. Then we can also make the jump down to 3S and that turns that 12 second difference in efficiency into nearly 34 seconds, assuming you keep battery with the same power capacity. Now that doesn't mean a battery with the same milliamp hour capacity. This is the watt hours of the battery, which is the milliamp hours multiplied by the pack voltage. So if you have a 600 milliamp 4S, that's equivalent to an 800 milliamp 3S battery. They both have around eight, eight point something watt hours of power. The, the other simple way to, to look at it is to compare, if you're comparing a like manufacturer's battery, just compare them by weight. Both the, the 800 milliamp 3S and the 600 milliamp 4S weigh around 72 grams and they have the same amount of total power. And of course, all of this that, that we're looking at here is, is theory crafting and we're looking at uh, static thrust results, not live efficiency in the air. There are a lot of other factors factors that impact this. You know, if you are racing or flying, you're not spending 100% of the time at full throttle. So your efficiency is actually going to be uh, a lot higher during a lot of the time anywhere you're mid throttle or even kind of you know middle high throttle but even in that case if you figure an average efficient efficiency that actually makes the gains dropping to lower voltage even better if we assume we're playing in playing within this 3s range as the power output drops the difference in efficiency gains even bigger than it does 
up here where we're getting a 10% gain between the, the voltages there. So if you're riding like half throttle on uh, the 4S, comparing that to the 3S is an even bigger gain in efficiency, which on average over an entire, uh, you know, an entire flight session would mean even more flight time from the same power capacity battery. So this completely goes against what I expected to see, and I'm not exactly sure why this happens. Because if anything, I expected that the higher voltages would have slightly higher efficiency from uh, reduced losses elsewhere in the circuit. And I have seen this effect on other motors. It's not tied to the, the motor or the, the prop. I've looked at some similar testing on uh, difference on some of the uh, 1106 motors. I've got some 2S and 3S stuff and I see the same effect repeated there. What I'm not sure is if perhaps it's an artifact of the, uh, the speed controller. Um, I haven't yet tested it on other speed controllers. This is all on a Lumineer uh, 2-6S BL Heli S ESC. So I'll have to continue to look into this and, and pull out the, the, the BL Heli 32 and the KISS ESCs that I've got to see if uh, different, you know, maybe it's a, the particular FET selection. There's some something that's uh, not working as well at higher voltages or uh, some artifact of the gate drivers uh, having a lower source voltage or something like that is, is, is having an effect. I'm not exactly sure, but it's very clearly measurable and repeatable, multiple tests. Um, just for this one particular test, I have three runs at, at each voltage and very consistent results every single run. So there's some food for thought. If you're looking to eke out some additional flight time on a run, if you're down 25% from your maximum throttle position, and if this effect does hold up across multiple ESCs, it's not a insignificant factor and it's a really easy gain if you're in a position to take advantage of it.